Hello, and welcome to the 31st episode of The Route, our ongoing School Bus Week content series. I'm Wes Platt, Executive Editor. Thank you for joining us. In this episode, I'll recap some of the top news published recently on our School Bus Fleet website. Be sure to follow us on social media, click like on this and all our other videos, and be sure to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Uh, We've had a few more new subscribers lately, keep them coming. Your comments are always welcome. If you get a chance, please post who you are, where you're from, your city, your state, your school district, and that way in a future episode, I'll be able to give a shout out to you. Okay, let's get rolling. Our first stop is Washington, D.C., in the headquarters of the Federal Communications Commission. The FCC has about $1.5 billion left in the coffers of its emergency connectivity fund. During the recent third window of applications, though, the FCC received requests for more than $2.8 billion uh, from districts hoping to fund more than 5 million connected devices and nearly 4.3 million broadband connections. Applications came from all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico. Obviously, the FCC doesn't have enough money for everybody. So applications are going to be prioritized to fund schools and libraries with the greatest need first, especially those in rural areas, said FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel. The continued interest in the Emergency Connectivity Fund demonstrates what we've known for a long time. Far too many kids across the country need off-campus support to get online and keep up with their schoolwork. This program has been able to help millions of students over the past year and into the coming school year. I'm proud of that. We received more requests than Congress gave us funds to support for this final round of applications, so we're prioritizing those with the greatest need, but the work doesn't stop there. We'll continue to look for ways to close the homework gap and ensure no child is left offline. Since its inception, the Emergency Connectivity Fund has helped more than 12.5 million students and provided schools and libraries with more than 10 million connected devices and 5 million broadband connections. Has your district benefited from applying to this fund? Tell me about that in the comments. Our next stop is South Charleston, West Virginia, where some major milestones are not too far ahead for Green Power Motor Company. The company is set to take possession of its new facility in West Virginia in August. And once kids get back to school in September, workers at the South Charleston plant are expected to get to work on on new all-electric Beast and Nano Beast school buses to meet anticipated demand created by the EPA's Clean School Bus Program. Brendan Riley, President and Director of Green Powers, said, our West Virginia operations will serve as a cornerstone for U.S. manufacturing to deliver electric school buses to our customers on the East Coast and adjacent regions. The state's governor, Jim Justice, called for the creation of a pilot project to demonstrate Green Powers electric buses in school districts across West Virginia to show how they can function in rural and urban environments. Okay, next stop is Greenwood Village, Colorado, and the headquarters of what used to be ALC Schools, but is now Everdriven, a transportation company focused on students with special needs. Since 2005, the company has worked with school districts across the country to provide transportation and real-time tracking. This school year, as they take on a new name to reflect the company's vision of the future, they've driven more than 21 million miles and carried 10,500 students. They've also added 2,700 new drivers. Said CEO Mitch Bowling, we are very excited that our brand will better convey the heart of our mission. We don't just drive, we're driven. Driven to provide safe rides and excellent service to the most vulnerable in our communities. Making sure those with special transportation needs are well taken care of is our passion and our purpose, and we love that our new brand reflects that. The company also has hired Courtney Zell to fill the new position of Vice President of Marketing. Our last stop is Hutchinson, Kansas, where Rev Group subsidiary Collins Bus recently announced two new leadership appointments. First, the company named Bryce Pfister as vice president and general manager, reporting to Brian Perry, 
who is president of Rev's commercial segment. Second, Collins tapped Todd Gibson as North America sales director, reporting to Fister. Fister has been with Rev Group since 1991 and first worked at Collins in 1997 as an engineering director. Before taking his new role, he was vice president of operational excellence for Rev Group's commercial division. Gibson comes to Collins with 11 years of experience in the school bus manufacturing industry, where he has held manager and director level positions. All right, now it's time to park the bus. Before we go, a quick hello to some of our subscribers like Matthew Reiser and Jeremy Crowhurst. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe and like all our videos. Tell your friends about the route. You can reach out to me by email at west.platt at bobbit.com. Tweet us at School Bus Fleet. Drive safely and see you next time on the route.